How is reflection used in C Sharp? Uh, you know, a lot of programmers work a very long time and never cross paths with reflection. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it to be a very useful tool mm -hmm. um, that can cut short a lot of things where somebody's written a whole lot of code that doesn't necessarily even do the job well. So reflection allows us to investigate objects at runtime even if we didn't know what they were at compile time. Um, so uh, the, the quintessential example I can come up with is if you have a video game, because everyone loves video game analogies. Right. If you have a video game that was written in January, mm -hmm. and then in July, somebody comes out with an expansion pack or a, a mod, mm -hmm. right? And they say, all you gotta do is drop this file into the folder, and mm -hmm. you get this new functionality. How did that happen? Well, it happened because the original program has like a plugins folder or something like that. Yep. And every time the program starts up, it looks in this plugins folder for code. It has to use that code even though it didn't know what it was at the time that the original programmers wrote it. Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, there has to be a careful handshake um, where the programmer is, is, is looking in that plugin folder and mindful of all the possibilities that could be in there okay so we could get really far into the weeds but i think we can come up with a real simple example here. okay so let's write a method okay all right uh, it can even be a static method doesn't matter what it is we're just gonna it's a one and done so okay um let's have it take let's call it properties mm. or something like that get properties okay get properties <laughs> Get prop. Get prop. Okay. And let's have it take an object. And we don't even care what kind of object. Just any object. Okay. Mm, input. Input. Okay. So let's then do some reflection here and see what we can come up with. Okay. So let's... First thing we need is we need to deal with the... T we, don't, we don't know what type of object that is. Right. So we're going to say uh, type, capital T, and uh, a variable name T. Okay, like this? No, 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 the oh, lowercase sorry. t. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Equals, oh, actually, it wrote it right there. Type of object. So we're going to get the type yeah, yeah, of yeah. that object. Uh, granted, we don't know what this object is. It might have, it might be something that hasn't even been written yet, for all we know. Right. But we're going to go and get its type, which is uh, an object that tells us all about the definition of this object. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to the next line. Okay. We can in, we can start investigating that type. We can go t dot. I believe there is a get properties or something like that. Mm. Yeah, there it is. Okay, uh, which is a method, and I believe you have to pass it the input object. I can't remember. Do you? Maybe. Must not. No. Yeah, it just works as is. Gotcha. Right. And we'll throw that into a variable. It's actually going to return back a, a, a collection array of property info. Okay. Um, so it's going to give us now back all the information about the properties that this object has, even though we don't know what it is yet. <laughs> okay. So you're going to go ahead and call it out here. Yeah. So it's, we got this. Yeah. We can pass it the number one. And no. And G. I don't yeah. know why. We could make up some new class. It's something we've never even seen mm -hmm. before, but those will work. So now on line 19, let's do a little for each here. Okay. And for each, uh, var p for property in our t2, which is actually a collection of properties. Okay. All right. So now that we have all these properties, we can investigate them. And what we can do this, we can do a console.write. Okay. I like it. Because we are in a console application. Write line will work. And let's pass uh, into it, let's pass p dot. I bet you there's something like property name. Name. There we go. Mm -hmm. So now let's comment out line 12, just so we don't get this too confused. Okay. So we're going to pass an integer in here. Mm -hmm. And let's just run this code and see what happens. Okay. May have to close out your old one there. Um, except for 
dun, dun, dun. public get properties. Okay, we may have to step through this and see where we went awry. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. I may have to put some additional code in here. Let's see. So let's step in. These. Okay. Step, step. And let's look. T should be of type integer. Oh, wait, wait, no. Actually, what does it say? T is an object. Mm. Oh, because we put the wrong thing in there. A type of object. I didn't even... You know what? The IntelliSense wrote that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it should be type of... There you go. Yeah, actually, it's input.get type. I didn't... It, IntelliSense. Come on. No type of. Because we're not getting the type from the word object. We're getting it off the variable. This is get? Yep, get type, open, close. There we go. Okay, that's making a little more sense now. Okay, coming in here. Yeah, so now type right there, we can stop. T is equal to an integer. Yeah. I knew something was wrong. I know, yeah. <laughs> and if you step one more, mm -hmm. T2 is now a collection of properties. Yep. Uh, though it may not have any. It has zero. Oh, well, then that's not really <laughs> exciting, is it? Um, I guess, okay, well, you know what? That's fine. We didn't get any. That's fine. I, so. An integer doesn't have any properties. <laughs> it was, it's got a couple of methods, but it doesn't have any properties. Uh, string has properties. Yeah. So let's go ahead and just run that next one. Okay. I'm going to step down and into, okay. Yeah. So now T is should be a string. And now it has two. Well, I knew it had length, and I knew mm -hmm. it'd probably have another one. So, there you yeah. go. So now when we run our code, we should have chars and length. Yep. So everyone remembers you can do string dot length. Right. To get the length of the string, um, I didn't know you were going to be passing me a string, but now I know things about that data type that got passed in. So you can imagine somebody writing a piece of code um, with methods and properties mm -hmm. and uh, events even, uh, anything you could, enums, whatever mm -hmm. whatever could be in that code, we could investigate that object and then use that in our program. Yeah. And that is the concept of reflection. Thank you for watching that video from F12 Programming. Please remember to like and subscribe. That does so much for us in the ratings. You have no idea. Also, don't forget to comment below. I hope you enjoyed and good luck coding.